The production of this video was made possible by donors to the Orchestration Online Patreon Initiative. Please consider adding your support to the creation of free educational internet resources by visiting our Patreon page linked below. Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor, Thomas Goss, just starting to pack my bags for next week's flight to California. Before I leave, though, here's one more video tip taken from the pages of my upcoming book, 100 More Orchestration Tips, all about the unique character and usability of the flute's middle register. While a great deal of focus is given to the power and brilliance of the flute's high register, and the breathy emotion of its low register, don't discount the wonderfully balanced qualities of its middle register. There's a tendency in orchestral scoring to employ wind instruments in their most potent registers for solos and featured lines. This is only a natural outcome of the pursuit of balance, in which the natural qualities of instruments are often the strongest and most obvious options. On the other hand, Certain weaker registers are often highlighted precisely because they work against this timbral hegemony, the low register of the flute, for instance, or the tenor register of the bassoon. In all this pushing back and forth between convenience and contrast, the middle register of the flute can often be lost in the shuffle. I'll see scores in which there are many key high register passages for flute, and maybe a solo here or there for the low register. As to the middle register, almost all the scoring involves supporting other instruments, like doubling string harmonies or melodies, or playing as part of a woodwind harmony. It's a peculiar feature of flute acoustics that the low register is weaker. Its wind section neighbors all have rich, pungent fundamental tones, like the bassoon's powerful low register or the clarinet's intense, dark, shallow mo register. The flute is just the opposite, with a fairly gentle low register, gaining strength until its highest notes are practically shrieking. The clearest, most generally useful register sits below this extreme, from around A5 to G6. As it's easily heard above the throng, that register gets the most love from composers in countless thematic lines. <laughs> As to the middle register, there's an edge of disregard in orchestration manuals. Rimsky-Korsakov describes it as sweet, transparent, which might easily be misinterpreted as negligible in usefulness. Adler, for all his greatness, is more dismissive, even calling the middle register nondescript, though he balances the claim by pointing out the care with which his excerpts are scored. As an orchestrator, I'd call the middle register warm, subtle, and poetic. Where Adler might equate its lack of brilliance with lack of distinctive features, I see it as being full of potential, as if the capacity for the high register's bright tone is just slightly bottled up in the middle, but ready to burst outward and upward. And conversely, the velvet darkness of the low register is only slightly brightened as it rises up to the middle, but then revealing a bit more sheen and radiance to the fabric. It's up to the orchestrator to explore the potential of these opposing qualities as they meet in the center of the instrument. The opening flute solo of Debussy's Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn represents exactly this balance of qualities. The first note of C-sharp hangs beautifully in the air, probably evoking a folk flute to the original audience of Debussy's day. Then the line slowly descends down towards the lower register, ever more dark in tone, but then pulling back to the C-sharp again by the end of the bar. At the end of the second iteration, the flute gains a little in radiance as it ascends all the way up to G-sharp 5, but then immediately contrasts this tone quality by leaping downward, eventually to an octave lower. Debussy couldn't have scored this better for my purposes if he'd been reading this tip over my shoulder. But it's not just that the middle register possesses the potential for both brilliance and darkness within it. 
it's also that the capacity for nuancing these tendencies is at a premium, because those extremes are all more controlled, and so are the player's breath and lip. To a degree, the middle register is the most human, most verbal of the registers, because inflections may be introduced that approach the finesse of language. In fact, this kind of verbalizing was the basis of Jean-Pierre Rampal's unique sound, and it came out the fullest in places such as the two bars of Syrinx excerpted below. Debussy has taken pains in both the upward pulling gestures and the dynamic markings to give the player the maximum range of subtle expression. The result is two intense bars from a solo work that seems fraught with meaning. These nuanced, balanced qualities come at a price. The flute's middle register is only a little bit stronger than its low register, at least up to around D5 where the second partial overblowing starts. So make sure that your accompanying textures are fairly light when highlighting this register. It still baffles me why Adler would characterize the middle register of the flute as nondescript, especially when you consider the enormous amount of exceptional flute scoring in that range. One such piece is the framing music that I use in this video, Bach's Orchestral Suite in B minor, which has a mostly middle register flute part that's totally gorgeous. I think it just illustrates why you should read and study many different resources on orchestration for a broader picture of how things work, and even then make up your own mind about things like the qualities of different woodwind registers. Well, I've got to get back to packing and finishing up on the editing of my book. See you soon.